Well, I'm guessing that he will um, do what most politicians do, which is to run from one side during the campaign and shift to the middle um, during governing. Uh, there is a school of thought, you know, that um, like Nixon opening China or Menachem Begin um, signing a peace treaty with Egypt, that Netanyahu may turn out to be more of a peacenik than the labor folks who are credited with that reputation. Uh, this is probably one of the least covered aspects of the Israeli elections, um, that the, um, the smaller parties did very, very well. This was the first time that Israeli voters actually voted directly for prime minister. And as a result, there, were, there was a lot of ticket splitting. People voted for Netanyahu or Perez as prime minister and then didn't have to vote for their big parties, for Likud or Labor. They were able to offer their votes to a whole host of uh, smaller parties. And as you say, the religious parties did very, very well, and it is widely assumed that Netanyahu will have to form a government with them. That's because true. this time they voted directly for prime minister. They, it was a sort of importing of American politics to Israel. They wanted direct elections. It was thought, actually, that the... Uh, that splitting the vote, that having a direct election for prime minister would give the prime minister's office more power and take power away from these smaller factionalized parties. Of course, in the end, um, they came up quite strong. As I said, the religious parties did very well. The other uh, unexpected victors were the immigrants. The Russian immigrant party did very, very well, and they are also now a power in the parliament or Knesset to be uh, contended with. Oh, absolutely. Um, King Hussein is a major player, and um, if he is embracing Netanyahu, uh, it gives an opening to uh, prospects for peace. It, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, it, it would be going too far, I think, to ignore the things that Netanyahu has said. Um, he has said that he will not give up the Golan Heights to Syria, and that pretty much closes the door on those negotiations. He has said he will not cotton a, palace, a separate Palestinian state, nor splitting uh, the city, the capital of Jerusalem, into two. So there are some, um, some somber notes um, for those uh, advocating peace, but King Hussein's endorsement is clearly a, a boon for Netanyahu. Um, well, I'm going to stay on the foreign policy side, which is what I know, and try not to comment on those things about which I know little. Oh, quite a bit, actually. Uh, in fact, uh, President Clinton was criticized last week for his warm embrace of, uh, of uh, Shimon Peres, uh, and there were questions raised about whether he had gone too far, whether he had overstepped the line of staying neutral in other countries' uh, election battles. Um, and the White House since, of course, has been scrambling to, um, to repair relations with Netanyahu. Um, and there was some anecdotal evidence, at least, that some voters in Israel were sufficiently piqued uh, at what they considered White House meddling that they may have voted for Bibi Netanyahu as a result. Um, the more serious one is, is Russia, as you suggest. The White House has made no secret um, that it is backing Yeltsin. Most of the West is backing Yeltsin. There is a great fear that the communist leaders who gone off uh, will return Russia to an earlier pre-capitalistic pre uh, communist era um, and some concern about the stability, the financial stability of a, this huge country called Russia. Um, so uh, on that election, the White House has quite a bit more riding. Um, yeah, I, I have no doubt that, uh, that uh, if Yeltsin loses the election, the Republicans here would make it a domestic political issue against um, against President Clinton, as, the, as you suggest, uh, along the lines of the Who Lost Russia uh, debate that we once had about China. Yeah. Bibi is his nickname. Benjamin is the given name. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it reflects what I mentioned earlier, that a lot of people um, thought the White House went too far. I, I don't think it's fair to say that Clinton cares not at all for Israeli security. Um, his Secretary of State has worked very hard um, to, uh, to forward the peace process in that region. Um, but, but it is true that um, they, they went beyond the bounds of normal uh, neutral positioning. I gather not. Um, I, I think they were taken aback. The interesting thing to me about the 
sort of tacit endorsement of, of, of Perez by the White House was that it didn't really do them any good, uh, and I don't really know why they did it. In other words, if Perez had won, uh, he would have been grateful to the White House in any event uh, for a whole host of other things, other reasons. Uh, and of course, if Bibi had won, uh, it wasn't going to do them any good to have endorsed Perez. So. I think that the policy might have been a little uh, premature and not productive from their own personal political point of view. Um, I, I think uh, Perez is perhaps the saddest figure in this whole drama. Uh, someone compared him this morning uh, to the Adlai Stevenson of Israeli politics. Um, he is a, a, a sad figure because he's an eloquent speaker, a person uh, who believes strongly in peace. Uh, who wanted to carry on the legacy of Yitzhak Rabin, who was assassinated in November. Um, there are those who think that he did not invoke Rabin's name enough, that he would have done better to uh, make it a referendum, really, on Rabin's leadership. Um, but in any event, the, um, the, sad, the poignance of, of his, this is a figure who has four times been rejected by the Israeli public for the top spot, um, a 72-year-old man who has given his whole life to peace and now finds himself rejected in this rather hotly contested, contentious election. As soon as he can form a government, he has 45 days to form a coalition government with, as we mentioned earlier, these parties in the parliament. Um, one of the things that Netanyahu has said is that he wants to, to resume building settlements in these areas, uh, these sort of Palestinian neighborhoods, and that will be very contentious in Israel and, as you suggest, a problem for the United States. Keep in mind, um, you know, Israel is the top uh, uh, foreign aid beneficiary of United States foreign aid, getting $3 billion a year, and that gives the White House a certain amount of leverage in pushing uh, one way or the other. You know, Steve, one of the interesting aspects of the Israeli election that has not gotten uh, too much attention is that um, the Israeli Arabs, those Arabs who are citizens of Israel, who hold Israeli passports and who are eligible to vote, uh, constitute now about 12 percent of the electorate. Um, and if you take away their votes, they went largely for Perez, overwhelmingly for Perez, and they turned out in pretty good numbers. Um, if you take out their votes, Netanyahu won quite handily. Um, so it is, it is accurate, although probably not politically correct, to say that among the Jewish voters of Israel, uh, Bibi Netanyahu won convincingly. So uh, what, what we have is basically an Israel that is not only divided, but is also becoming more um, less homogeneous. It is becoming a more pluralistic place. It maybe we in the media should stop calling it the Jewish state, although it is in its essence a Jewish state, but it, it does have now a large component of other blocks of opinion. I know there is a conference plan for Washington for next week about um, drugs and democracy and um, the impact of drug usage in the Caribbean and what it's doing to the stability of those countries. There is a concern that you know, these high levels of drugs can uh, destabilize uh, fragile democracies. Well, um, mostly we're giving back some land. I don't know that we're pulling out so many troops. We're, give, we're giving the, Jap the Okinawans back some major portion of the land that we had been using there in Japan. And this was an attempt to appease anger over uh, the U.S. presence there, over the rape of a young girl by, um, you know, by two, uh, several Marines. and. Um, so uh, I, I think that it is interesting that in, in Japan there is quite divided opinion about the bases and about whether they should continue and in what format. Uh, it, it, for the first time we have really seen a split between Tokyo and, and a local government. The governor of Okinawa has been quite outspoken that he wants these bases reduced and, and the soldiers removed. And the government of Tokyo, of course, has some other interests with the United States. Um, some security, some overall uh, bilateral interests, and wants them to stay. So it's been this, this interesting open rift to watch. Um, Netanyahu's campaign slogan was peace through security, and I think uh, it resonated with voters like yourself who 
um, you know, wasn't really so much fear as it was concern about the security of their children and their own, their own lives. Uh, Bibi actually has quite an American history. Um, he, um, he was educated here. He went to high school here and he went to MIT. His father is a well-known academic. Uh, who, uh, who was teaching here, and that's why he landed here. It's one of the things that gives him what's called flawless, unaccented English and, uh, and allowed him to become really a stellar media star for the Israelis uh, during the Madrid Peace Conference in 1991. Um, his brother, Jonathan Netanyahu, is one of Israel's great war heroes. Uh, he was the only casualty at the... Uh, and Tibi raid uh, to free uh, Israeli hostages um, in Uganda, and um, he has so he has the sort of gloss of that family aura about him. And uh, I think the most one of the most interesting things to watch about Bibi Netanyahu is what he has in common with Bill Clinton. He, they are of the same generation. Uh, Netanyahu is 46. They're obviously of different ideologies, but they both have sort of an outsized appetite for life. Uh, BB, there was something called Bibi Gate in Netanyahu's past, which was a sex scandal in Israel in which he disclosed on television uh, that he had had an affair while married. Um, and uh, he has this great talent for media savvy leadership, which, which you might say in our era is, uh, is something one needs for, lead for, for power. I, we we're planning a cover story on Netanyahu and uh, whether he will be um, uh, a pragmatist or an ideologue and news coverage as well. Sales are, are modestly good and there's a little cult following and I thank C-SPAN <laughs> for that. Briefly. This is uh, our mystery novel. It's just coming out this month and it opens when a correspondent uh, at the head table at the White House Correspondents Association drops dead in his soup. The rest you'll have to read. It is out now, yeah. I grew up in Los Angeles almost 20 years. Thank you, Steve.